Amen. We thank you, Lord, because you are God. Besides you, there is none other. Lord, we magnify you. We edify you. We give you all honor, praise, and glory for thus this day that you have allowed us to be here, oh God. We thank you, God, for our goings and our coming. We thank you, Lord, that you can have your way in us, God. We even thank you, God, that you can trust us, God, to be a living testimony, a living sacrifice. God, to be an example of the things that you've already brought us from, through, and over and under. God, we thank you, God, that you allowed us to come together today. Not, God, in any shape, form, or fashion, God, but to learn of you, God, to, to become more disciple, uh, to become more in, endowed with your precious Holy Spirit, God. Send your word. Let it do, God, what it said it would do, God. We thank you right now, God, that we are a willing vessel. Yes, Lord. We thank you right now, God, that we are surrendering our all to you, God. Have your way in us today, God. Yes, Lord. Do what you do, God. Those that are here, those that are coming today, God. Yes. Oh, God, we thank you right now, God, that you would meet them here, God. Yes. Meet their needs according to your riches and glory, God. But most of us, God, meet their spiritual needs, God. Yes. We know, God, that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. Yes. And, God, we do love you, God, not because of what we need from you, God, but because of what you've already done. We thank you, God, for the, the, the shedding of the blood for the remission of our sins. We thank you, God, not only for the shedding of blood, but we thank you, God, for him getting up with all power in heaven and earth. So, Lord, we just thank you right now. We pray, God, that you would be magnified. And God, we pray that the enemy would be horrified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. We want to just share with you a quick scripture. It's, it's coming out of the book of Acts where we'll pick up our teaching from. And this is Paul in Ephesus uh, still doing the works of a disciple. And if you've been keeping up and been going along with Paul's journey, Paul was wanted to get back to Rome, or he wanted to get to Rome, rather. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where Acts is going to end, and mm -hmm. making it to Rome. Amen. But he, he, he encountered a lot of things on his way to Rome. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but on our way home, uh -huh. <laughs> on our way to Come our on, destination, yeah. uh, don't find it. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't find it strange when you encounter some things, mm -hmm. amen, when you're talking about that Jesus, that God of yours. Mm -hmm. So Paul found himself here in Ephesus doing the work of the Lord. And, mm -hmm. and, and about 19 and 23, it says, And the same time there rose no small stir about that way. Mm -hmm. It says, but a, certain man, but a certain man named Demetrius, mm -hmm. a silversmith, which made silver shrines of Diana. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that song Michael Jackson wrote, don't you? Dirty Diana. Amen, amen. And when you study this, you'll find out that Diana was really just a meteorite that fell out the sky. And, and, and Diana had all these sexual figures about her. As a matter of fact, it said that she had multiple breasts all over the rock. It looked like breast, but it wasn't breast. And they was, they was worshiping her because she was a sex. It was a sex goddess. Now, I mean, now this will tell you some deep stuff on it. But anyway, they, the people wanted what they wanted. They didn't want what Paul was off. They didn't want to hear that he rose. They wanted what they wanted. They wanted what the flesh desires. And this is what he was saying. Demetrius rose up, and he was a cornerstone. He said that. That they was Paul was making them lose money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sermons in there. I ain't got time all of them, but in your reader, read that. So we appreciate you. He said that whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation. He said, "Sirs, mm -hmm. ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moreover, ye see that and hear that not alone at Ephesus." But almost throughout all Asia, mm -hmm. this Paul <laughs> had persuaded and turned away much people, mm -hmm. saying that they be no gods mm -hmm. which are made with hand. Mm -hmm. So that not only is this, is this our craft in danger mm -hmm. to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess of Diana should be 
despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipped. I just want you to know that when, when, when you begin to do discipleship, <laughs> I guess that's the reason people stay away from discipleship, mm -hmm. because they don't like confrontation. <laughs> Amen. Confrontation, the devil has always been confrontational. Mm -hmm. But if you go back to the last lesson that we had, God says, I have some people mm -hmm. set in place. So it is right here. He has somebody Set in place. So when the Bible says, be still and know that I'm God, you got to know that. And not only says be still, he says, but I'll fight to battle for you. And not only that, I'll be the God that go before you. So God is not going to send us somewhere. Or he's not going to tell us to do something without making prior preparation. So I just want to encourage you tonight to know that whatever you're going through, for the sake of the gospel. Amen. For the sake of the gospel. God got you. Amen. He got you. Amen. Amen. And, and he let us know there's going to be some treacherous times. We're living in times right now just like this. Folk will tell you right now, I don't want to hear nothing about that, that church stuff. Give me the world. That's, that's basically what he was saying. We don't want to hear nothing about that. We're having too good of a time. Amen. Amen. So I thank God for this lesson and for this, this time of study that's, that's, that's really been encouraging to me. I believe that every leader, every disciple, every church worker, if you'll walk through this, you'll see that there's much work to do, but the mission is possible. Amen. It's not impossible. I know what the movie said, Mission Impossible, mm -hmm. but the mission is possible. Amen. God bless y'all. Amen. 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 We're going to have our Amen. speaker up today. Amen. 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 I'm not going to even sing that song, Pastor, that went on into. <laughs> I was going to do a little praise, but uh, we good. We going to go on. Amen. Go on with the lesson. No, it's good. It's go good. On with the lesson again. Uh-uh. We good with the lesson. Uh, and you said, no, nah, we don't need it. Uh, so, um, you were just saying that, you know, with God, all things are possible, but for those who are mission minded for those who are disciples, that's really why we need to know who we are. Let's go to well, Matthew 23. You have confidence in not only who you are, but whose. Whose you are. That's you right. To that's right. And so as comfortable as we can get or probably or or maybe uninterested in the studies. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the membership now. Uh, uninterested that's, that's, as, that's as insecure as you're going to be trying to be an imbalance, trying to be a disciple, because you don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure this thing out. You make two steps, one step forward and two steps backwards as soon as something happens because you're not settled in your spirit about who and whose you are. Amen. you got to know who you are in this hour. Amen. Pastor said that, that. You know, I was listening to uh, Pastor... Um, Sphinx this morning, you know, as he was talking about, we are in the times that the Bible says that we're in. Make no bones about it. <laughs> it's already been predicted. So it's already been predicted that even the elect would be fooled in this hour. You can't take nothing for granted. Amen. You can't take no spiritual learning. You can't take no worship, no praise, no understanding, no word, no nothing for granted because we are in the last days. Amen. More and more, the enemy is sure of who he is. Yeah. Right. He's very sure. Amen. I listen to him talk through somebody. I'm listening at their, you know, their show. Mm -hmm. People, when the enemy has them blinded, they speak with confidence. Yes. They're confident that who, they're, who they are is acceptable in the sight of God. Thank they're com confident that the sin that they walk in that God is okay. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that our job is to show mercy and grace. Amen. You know, and we do judge the fruit. Mm -hmm. But we can't give them heaven or hell. So don't misplace the love, the smile, the handshake, the prayers to thinking that you're okay with God Almighty. Amen. 
Oh, my goodness. It's a bad thing to be fooled in the last and evil days. Because he just keep pouring out stuff and pouring out stuff to make it look like you're right. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> so we that's what we're here for. Go to Matthew 23. Because everything that everything that we and certain of the leaders out of the year, then we just start leadership training. All right, this is part of the expectation. I just want everybody to know that's watching. It is a part of the expectation. Okay? I ain't doubling back. So, Matthew 23. And I'm going to read it, but I, I, I need to read it. I'm only going to pull out some things because uh, we're talking about uh, the server on tonight. But I thought it was kind of important to take a look at the server from the front end. Matthew 23 says, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, and I'm only taking out a principle and I'm going on to the lesson, okay? Uh, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must obey them and do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do. Let me go back and make that make sense. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, the leaders of the church. So you must obey them and do everything they tell you. There's a difference. But do not do what they do. For they do not practice what they preach. Okay. Boy, this the whole, this ain't the lesson, but okay. you, you can see that. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it's, it's real good for, you know, sometimes you will say people, uh, people uh, uh, show can't tell you what to do, but you don't see them doing it. Mm. Well, that's that, that, yes, they can. Because mm. here it is, Jesus saying, they tell you right. The thing that I need to do is listen, listen to that, but do not follow them because they're not practicing it. Mm -hmm. But don't discount perhaps what you're being told. Mm -hmm. It's just they not have they have not surrendered to what the truth of it is. Mm -hmm. Okay? So then he goes on, they tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger mm -hmm. to move them. Yeah, they're going to expect everybody else to serve, everybody else to do, everybody else to, to do what they're told to do, but all they're doing is keep giving instructions, but they're not following. Mm -hmm. Everything they do is done for men to see. Mm -hmm. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. Mm -hmm. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogue. They love to be greeted in the marketplaces and to have men call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi for you have only one master and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father for you have one father and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called teacher for you have one teacher, the Christ. This is the key. The greatest among you will be your servant. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So, yes, that's, if we weren't trying to do what we're trying to do, <laughs> you got to come in, anybody out here, Pastor, hmm, hmm, all of that. <laughs> yes, it's all of that. All of that, that, that is done for show. All of that that is done outward uh, for uh, the benefit of your glory, of their glory, to look pious, to look religious, to look studious. That's why sometimes in this hour we, we're concerned about clothes and what we wear to church and how we do this or how we do that. And uh, that ain't necessary. I used to hear my preacher used to say, if you're a dressed up devil, what good is that making if you're a dressed up devil? What, what, I mean, okay, all right. And, so, and, and you know, it's, yes, sir. You really, it's proven in the Bible mm -hmm. that you really can't resist that. Mm -hmm. 
unless you're walking on the power and authority mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Because that's what the devil did to Jesus. He took him up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and kept <coughs> making it about him. Uh -huh. But it's really not about us. So if the devil did it to Jesus, mm -hmm. and Jesus used the strategy of the Bible to resist it, mm -hmm. and it worked, uh -huh. it, it still works yeah. if you use it. Yeah. And if you don't know it, you don't you don't use it, and if you have not tried it, mm -hmm. you don't know if it'll work or not. Amen, mm -hmm. amen. So it, it, it's I hate to say trial and error, mm -hmm. but it, it's really it's really a testing of your faith. Let me mm -hmm. say it that way. Amen. And a lot of people don't don't ever get to that point because they they they, they start resisting it, mm -hmm. or they 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 say, okay, I really have Diana. <laughs> I'd rather have the world. It's too hard. I'd rather, mm -hmm. I'm just going to stay out here. This is too complicated. But them folks at church ain't right, or or he ain't right, or she just went over all that, you know, as long as they ain't right, you mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. When they get wrong, you okay. stay right. Amen. Right. And Amen. let the Lord handle them. Right. Amen. Right. And I think that's what I was about to say. I think the key is here, sometimes I don't hear many people stopping at that part where it says, verse 3, so you must obey them and do everything they tell you, but don't you do what they do because they ain't practicing what they're telling you. We, we, stop at what, we stop at what we see people doing, and then we pick up from there, and that's our religion. That's where we are. That's our church going. Because I see them doing that. That appeals to my emotion, appeals to my personality, it appeals to who I am. So it appeals to me, I'm going to hop on with that. But they don't never know that the things that's being taught, or that they're teaching, they're not doing it. But you know, even the enemy will use that in that whole scenario right mm -hmm. there. Do what they tell you, not what they do. The devil will even use that scenario right there and say, hey, I might as well keep doing what I'm doing because mm -hmm. they talking about it, mm -hmm. but they can't do it. Mm -hmm. I, I see what you're saying. That's why people say so, so, they stay away. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they say, we don't see you doing right. what you're telling us. So why should I be a part of the church? Mm -hmm. Why should I be a part of ministry? Why should I be a part? You can turn this one off over here too, baby, for real. Uh, <laughs> yeah, why should I be a part of this? Because... They're not great examples. But yet, all in all, and I, I'm a witness of being around, being in church, being an organized church, being a denominationalized church for all my life, most all my life, Harpo. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this. I've been running for Jesus, and I'm not tired yet. Amen. And no matter what was not the best example in front of me, the relationship I built was about me and God. And he didn't have to tell me but one time I was sitting under the hair dryer and uh, just studying the word and thinking over a situation uh, that was in a congregation. And the Lord said, and we was thinking, I think he had already declared I ain't going back to church. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, oh, no, I didn't get into this. I've been going to church all my life. Oh, boy, I got to see what's going on. And I'm praying and I'm studying. And the Lord said to me, Remember this, I'm God. I ain't done nothing to you. He didn't have to tell me for one time. People didn't bother me, how they acted, how they treated me. From then on, I could place man where he needed to be and put God where he was going to stay. Amen. And if it didn't seem like it was God, I'm sorry. I just didn't bring no respect to it, and I just couldn't connect with it. Not in rebellion, but in understanding. So I can let him be, and that, that air is gone too. And <laughs> now the fan is out the air on my lap. But amen. So we got that out. So the main scripture he says is, though, out of this example that he showed us in 23, the main thing that we're looking at is the servant. What he says, the greatest among you is the servant, which is most people's desire to be a servant or they think that they know how to serve. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, uh, we're seeing here that out of Romans 12, 6 through 9, 
which is our base uh, scriptures, our seven uh, motivational gifts. This is the second one. We see that serving uh, in some sense of the matter is a gift. To be a server is to be a gift, and yet it still can be learned. I would say this, service from their heart, from what I know just off the top of my head, and knowing people who had it, I have been challenged a thousand times with friends can understand why God sent me servers for friends because that's not my primary gift and we're going to y'all going to get a chance to evaluate yourself right but it's not my primary gift so serving was always challenging like no matter what I did I would never be able to catch up with that one who was gifted to serve I'd never be able to outthink them in the way that they treated people or did things and then, again, when I learned this, it, I sell myself into who I was. Because the one thing about it is, you, when we learn about gifts, it don't put you in a box. Okay? It doesn't put you in a box. But all this is to make you more secure and understanding of who you are and who other people are. So you won't always be off or unbalanced. And not only unbalanced, but imbalanced. Because when you think about, we're going to do this, but this is necessary, I think, for this gift. Because a lot of people think they know what they're doing. Even servers miss it. Because when I say imbalanced, I say unbalanced because some people think they are servers. And they're mechanically trying to do what they, they're doing and they need to move out of the way. Then imbalance can be the server who knows it's them, but they don't know that they are ser servants from the heart. But they don't really know how to place themselves, so they're always trying to go in another area, or they feel mistreated all the time. So I'm getting a little ahead of the lesson. So they feel a little mistreated because, gosh, hey, I'm over here, and you never pick me to lead this, or pick me to lead that, or pick me to lead that, because, and so I don't want to get ahead. So I'm going to stop right there and say the Greek word for server is diakonia. Di D-I-A-K-O-N-I-A, -I -A, which conveys the idea, diakonia, which conveys the idea of doing practical things in order to be of service to others. Okay? The definition of that word that I can't really pronounce well means that it's, it's what the servant means. It conveys the idea of somebody doing practical things in order to serve others. Doing practical things. Now, now, mind you, there's a difference in practical things. What are practical things when we refer to that? I can't show up in a religious class. It's not you bringing me water, the pastor. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is it? I, I, I would say just checking on somebody. Yeah. You know, just the normal stuff that you would yeah, cleaning somebody's house, mm -hmm. uh, getting somebody some socks. What else, Pastor? Mowing somebody's yard. So it's in practical things doing for somebody else. The server receives joy in helping. Okay? Assisting. Now that's a biggie. Carrying out instructions and being of use in a wide variety of ways. You might find a server that is volunteering all the time. Okay? So let's take a look and you start, y'all got your papers where you can evaluate yourself from zero to five. Zero, never. One, seldom. Two, sometimes. Three, usually. Four, mostly. And five, always. Okay? So the first one is, yes, sir. I, I want to throw one more word in there for service. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that today and I had it planned out in between the building. Another, I guess, a description of a servant to slave. Yes. It's, it's, wow. it's, it's really when you, when you become that, when you come up. Uh, did you read that? Yeah, I said, hey, 
slaves really don't have no other choice but to obey. Okay, come on now. You, when you when you become when you be, take on that a slave to Christ. Uh -huh. a slave to his word, mm -hmm. it means that you don't really, you you sold out to the point where you don't have no other choice mm -hmm. but to do what God oh. says to do. Okay. You and become a slave to Christ. You, yeah. I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like you don't, you, your whole being is like you, you given, you know, you broken down your own will. It's like, it's, it's kind of like you being in prison, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know what the outside look like. You remember mm -hmm. what it looked like, but you ain't out there. All you can do is what you can do. Mm -hmm. And that's really the mentality mm -hmm. that you have to keep working towards is that, hey, I'm, 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 I'm prison to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I want to ever get, get out or get these, get mm -hmm. out of being in prison to him, which mm -hmm. other words, you know, and want to be free, mm -hmm. then I have to obey. Because okay. once you go to prison, Woo. you really have to follow some strict rules mm -hmm. in order to get out. Because you can do things that cause you to be there alone. Mm -hmm. But when you know that hey, I have to do this right, I have to do that right, mm -hmm. I have to do this right because my freedom, mm -hmm. that's yeah. what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. My freedom depends on it. Wow. Mm -hmm. I thought of the song, Lord, I'm willing <laughs> to a run lot, away. A lot of people sung this song. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Until they ran into some of those people like Paul ran into. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that ran that were trying to mm -hmm. kill him, run him out of town, that, that every time, mm -hmm. you know, his goods was 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 being evil mm -hmm. spoken of after all these people mm -hmm. was being changed. I, 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 I ain't gonna say it because I might start talking some more. I mean it's, it's a whole other talk for that. Oh, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> all right. That, that means you can piggyback off of all of this yeah. and put all of them in one place. <laughs> I'm almost through with my time. So, evaluate yourself. We're trying to see how much of a server you are tonight. Stop it, then, huh? I came from therapy. We got some extra. Don't worry about it. So, on the first one, that one. Really you got one? Yeah, she got mine. She got, she got extra. So the first one is easily the server is easily recognize its practical needs and is quick to meet them. A server can spot a need a mile away. And it's as though he or she has a built-in radar geared to others' necessities and high motivation to do something about those needs. You can spot service easily at a church pot potluck because if the if somebody if the kitchen is open with the school you're gonna find a server over there in the kitchen if they ain't preparing the meal they're trying to serve it trying to put it out or setting up the table and chairs and doing the cleaning up afterwards so evaluate yourself the second one is a server enjoys manual projects, jobs, and functions. Of all the motivational gifts, it is the servants who have the greatest dexterity with fists, the ability to work well with their hands. That's why they are called the hands of the body. Mm -hmm. whatever, the Bible said whatever your hands find to do, do them. The server loves that one because that must motivate them to take their hands and do some work. They can do just about anything that involves manual skill like artistic endeavors, repairs, carpentry, plumbing, electrical work, sewing, cooking, or gardening. And they tend to not have an interest in regular college. They prefer trade schools like beauty schools, art schools, and technical training. <laughs> Sound like everybody in my And I like this because it keeps us from feeling bad. A lot of people, like this wave that's going on, when, I, when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking about this wave that's going on where uh, people are now promoting trade school, right? I don't know how 
the education system became to where they're going to promote the technical schools now. Uh, I'm not sure if behind it is for people to find out who they really are and be okay with that. But I'm just saying there used to be a time where people felt insecure because they did not have a four-year degree. Now, I, I ain't never been insecure. I mean, I got a four-year degree. I got six of them now. But uh, <laughs> now a few this and that and the other. Okay. But it never bothered me to the point that it, you know, my neighbor finished, my best friend finished, and they did whatever, you know, because all it was was about me making a living and them making a living too. And some of them seemed like they bought and cheated their way through it. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, hey, that's stuff. But my thing I got on, but. Now you can see to me that if you are a server, that you're normal. Like you don't have to walk out of place trying to keep up with somebody who go to four years because you can be subject specific. Go do what you like to do, right? Number three, a server keeps everything in meticulous order. Servers cannot stand clutter, dirt, or disorganization Women and men with this gift often dust every day. Now y'all say men, cause they say women in here, but I know some men. I dated some men who were, I mean, a man. I don't wear like a mom. But a couple <laughs> that were just cleaner than I was. They gonna pick up, clean up, you know, do whatever was necessary. And this is say you can walk in a service house anytime, anytime, and their house gonna be ready. So I know I'm not that server. I'm gonna be ready for business. But I had a friend, Mary Simpson. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I couldn't keep up with her to save my life. And the thing that Mary would do is we would be at church, and she would give us an assignment. Remember that she would give us an assignment. And she said, we're going to meet at 6 to do it. Well, by the time we get there at 6, I said, well, I wasn't doing nothing, so I came on at 4. <laughs> it got it done all over me. I'm just like, what? <laughs> and she was just happy as a principal. But we never could keep up with her. We would just get there and say, okay, we'll, we'll show up. She just want to love on us when we get here. <laughs> or she'll say, I saved you one thing over there. <laughs> Man, from her heart, she was a server. So, then, yes, sir. So when you say meticulous, mm -hmm. that don't mean that everything is, is, I think that means there's a place for everything. Mm -hmm. And where you put things in order for you to have order may not be the way I do it. You know, I might, have, I might not have my keys here, my hat there, my this there, but I got them somewhere where I know I can get my hands on them. Yeah, because, you know, um, <laughs> when I had uh, <laughs> surgery, my uh, sister, Jennifer, came and she said, I'm going to help you in your house. I mean, she ordered it. Totally. Find totally. totally. <laughs> and I find as I, I get older, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm more of a a uh, person, a uh, 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 creature of habit. Mm -hmm. So when I and, and I say that because I have to, I put my stuff in an order. So if I'm leaving that house, it's just boom, 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 I'm gone. <laughs> and sometimes she'll move stuff because this don't go there. <laughs> this don't go there. It does for me yeah. because <laughs> that's my that's my mm -hmm. order. And it bothers her. I know it does. Mm -hmm. But as I, I notice as I get older, you know, I'll be looking like the other night. I was looking for my phone. I'm looking for my phone, looking for my phone. And I said, where's well, my phone? Now, I ain't even told her where it was at. <laughs> but it's because somebody had moved it. I put it, I came <clears> in the <throat> house, and I put it a certain place because I so I needed to be at that moment. Mm -hmm. It took me about an hour and a half to find it. Oh, <laughs> But see, my thing, it wasn't put it <laughs> my thing is, he said a key word. He, he, he said the key word in his sentence. He said, my and why. People get he's in a household 
one of which a woman should be established in most things. Like like like, like medicine by the coffee pot, just because you want to leave it there. You know, to me is <laughs> coffee goes by the coffee pot. So so let me tell you why. Keys it was go on the key ring. They don't go over here. You know, we got a closet for this, or we have, you know, your shoes you on the way out tickets. the door. You know, maybe we need to get a shoe pit. I don't even know if they, I'm just making up something. I don't even know if they make them. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> is that not the norm to have a shelf that, that ornaments go on, but your keys, your wallet, your chain, your sunglasses, your hat, that gets there. You know, it's just not normal for <laughs> The bathroom door is to close, but it becomes the closed closet. You know, that kind of thing. That's the part. But we gotta move on. And uh, the next thing is, but seriously, it said there are no dirty dishes. This is the server now, a true gifted server. Ain't no dirty dishes left in the sink. The laundry is, fo is folded. Now I'm talking about a born bona fide Server, we ain't talking about those that, okay? Can I ask a question? Uh-uh. <laughs> does everyone, does every server operate like that? Does that, if you don't have all to, that in place, does that mean you're not a server? No, because they, they, you, you're, you're the, you're the, you're the server. Never, seldom, sometimes, usually, mostly, always. You're going to figure that out about yourself. So you got some maybe seldom service, but the whole point when you get through, you're going to have three top gifts that may be like this, and you'll know which one operates the most or operate, you operate in the best. So, of course, again, it's not to put you in a box. Now, you know, that would match me, of course, but yes, go ahead. I, I, I had a question. Question. What if you were all of these things at one point in your life? Okay. And circumstances <laughs> changed it. Y'all ain't trying. Well, I'm going to just tell you, I'm just saying say not to go there. That's right. Yeah. Right. There are some things we have been, but I'm, I'm, a, okay, I might get in trouble. I might get in trouble. But my circumstance to get in trouble is that I have more than me to be concerned about. When I live by myself, meticulous was there. Things were in place. House would be clean. My bed would be made up. Uh, dishes would not be in the sink. Things that I felt that a house should have, breeze, uh, this and that. But when you have combat with your family, you know, those are things that can upset who you are, uh, <laughs> who you were born to be, because not only that, probably body age too. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so a lot of things... For in the last four years, all of that has changed for me. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Don't feel bad. <laughs> if you know that's really who you are, then judge yourself that that's who you are. Here's the kicker. Because people don't learn. Remember I told y'all this would work in a marriage if both male and female would understand this and begin to work off of this. Friends could have better relationships if they understood who they were. If you understood, you would begin to respect that. Mm -hmm. And then you would work with that because you can work, that would bring balance to who you are together. That's just my revelation when I got through with the entire study and began to look personally at myself and my household. But my whole household don't go out for this. So you just give. After a while, you just give. You're like, y'all do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. Can't be in the joint. You know, because I know who I really am. You know, who I'd really rather be. Because I'd rather not be stepping over this. I'd rather not. But I ain't doing it because you ain't had no appreciation. <laughs> when I was ironing the clothes. You know, <laughs> doing this. You know, when you go to a refrigerator, you go to a stove, you know, you know, cleaned up. And then you be like, didn't you not see I cleaned it up? Why you leave that glass sitting on the counter? Right. You know, you could at least respect me enough to know that the kitchen is clean. You got sugar on the bottom. You know, I, don't you see the whole thing was clean? So in order to...
keep your blood pressure so you won't have too much of a level of uh, milligrams of blood pressure pills. You just kind of let that kind of thing go. I understand it. Sister, uh, Pastor, well, I just want to throw this out there. See, see, Being see, meticulous does not mean you are a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, let's keep talking. Okay, so let's go. That's a, that's a because let's go and talk about the real servant. Number four, the servant is a detailed person with a good memory. Servants have a computer-type memory for details. They can remember where they filed away an article they clipped out of the newspaper, Pastor, three years ago. They remember that you like cream in your coffee, but not sugar. My husband's a, a servant. It used to be like that. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Yeah, I used to. <laughs> was I used to? Yeah. And uh, this, when he says uh, cream in your coffee, you know, like we never discussed some things that, that Jerome will bring to me. I know he's a bona fide servant. When I studied this, I was like, this is why he does what he does. Mm -hmm. But he could find, he could buy my clothes. Mm -hmm. Remember I told y'all before, he would come, used to come pick out my clothes and lay them on the bed. But he bought them, I'm saying, not pick them up. He would lay them down. Somebody say circumstances. Match them. <laughs> shoes down to stockings, earrings. <laughs> The whole nine, that kind of stuff, you know exactly what I like. And then right now, he'll walk in the house and say, I know you like this. Okay? Details. They remember all the birthdays on both sides of the family. Send cards. They can relate an episode from the 13th chapter of the book they read last week. Okay. <laughs> With accuracy. <laughs> that ain't me. <laughs> The next one is they enjoy showing hospitality. They look for opportunities to invite others over for dinner or dessert, and they do a terrific job of making their guests feel welcome. See, I'm saying Pastor need to go down to number one on this one, please. <laughs> Since he want to know this. Six, they will stay with something until it is complete. Service finish what they start. They have wonderful stick to it in stick stick to itness. When they say they will do something, they will do it. The only thing that produces frustration uh, frustration is when you give them something to do in too short of a time. You see, they not only want to finish a task, they want to do it well. Okay. Number seven, you're supposed to be grading yourself, Pastor. Has a hard time saying no to requests for help. Get this. Because servers are naturally geared to be helpful, and because they know that they are good at it, it is difficult for them to turn down a request for help. As a result, they tend to get over-involved. Even a simple question like, do you know what to use for a clogged drain? Will, will elicit a response like, let me come over and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The next one is more, they're more interested in meeting the needs of others than his or her own needs. Service are such caring people. Very caring people that they put people before themselves. Nine, they enjoy working on short-term goals rather than long-range goals. Service prefer, sh prefer short-term projects. They like something, some things that take two hours better than something that take two weeks and prefer a two-week or two-month project to a two-year project, which y'all see all the time. <laughs> I know this one. <laughs> um, then uh, the tenth one, they show love for others in deeds and actions more than words. Servers believe actions speak louder than words. They express their love in what they do. How many times have we heard, I love you, woman? Don't you know I did this? I did that. <laughs> ah, you talking about, I want you to say it. I'm just saying. That's if you got a server, uh, you got a server, uh, right? Let's see if you got a server, a uh, husband, a wife. Okay? So, uh, the server needs to feel appreciated, though. 
It's not that the service serve in order to be praised, but appreciation assures them that they've done well. And it builds up a positive self-image. It is the culmination of their joy in serving. So we can't misread them either. And I say that because sometimes we misread the server as being the person that wants to be seen. But they just say it right here. It builds their self-image of them. They're looking out to make sure that they're serving well. The next thing is they tend to do more than ask to do, though. Servers enjoy the doing that they often don't want to stop. The next one, they feel uh, greatest joy in doing something that is helpful. Okay? As long as they can help someone else get it done uh, or is helpful, don't call them in and then you just call me here for nothing. <laughs> I want to be helpful. So give me a project or give me a part of what you call me here to do so I can get it done for you. Servers do not want to lead others or projects. Servers are not leaders. They are followers. God made them that way. If a leadership position is forced on them, they are frustrated. Let me say that again. Servers are not leaders. They are followers. And God made them that way. And if a leadership position is forced on them, they are frustrated. Now, that's remember, this is not in the box. So you're going to be wavering. This may not be number five on your spectrum because you can still be a leader out of this. You still may have administration that goes with it or some other gift that operates with this, okay? So it is tempted to turn leadership over to service, though. Here's the situation. Because sometimes, even in church or on the job, we will see somebody that does things well, and we want to promote them to being the one to organize. When it should be, or to lead a group, when it should be the one that has administration skills. Okay, which is going to be mostly leaders out of that skill, right? And so, you either put them up against the wall, to challenge them to their frustrated, and they're going to come out frustrated not only with themselves, but they're going to come out frustrated with you and blaming you a lot of times and blaming the whole church when they come to church. Mm. Because they don't recognize themselves to say, I'm good over here. I'm going to stay right here. Mm. But it's always tempting because they're faithful. Mm -hmm. Because they do so much uh, uh, do a good job in whatever they do, it may seem that they are the natural ones to take charge. But when this happens, they lose their joy. They've been placed in a situation for which they are not equipped. The result is frustration for them and probably eventually frustration for those they try to lead. Right. This, is, this was interesting to me because I believe I have seen servers who don't understand this about themselves and they oftentimes feel mistreated in that position. But it's all right. Be who you are. I mean, understand who you are and you'll be satisfied. The next one is they have high energy level. Servers have one speed, that's fast forward. Let's get it done. They seem to have boundless energy. First Peter 4 and 11 urges them to serve with the strength which God furnishes abundantly. And indeed, servers seem to have unusual endurance and often get by with less sleep than the average person. Mm. God has endowed servers with all this energy because they are doers and there's so much that needs to be done. 16, they cannot stand to be around clutter. Servers are the ones who straighten crooked picture frames on the wall. <laughs> this can even be seen in serving children. 17, they tend to be perfectionists. Whatever servers do, they want to do it well, so 
They want things to be just right and are willing to work toward that end. They don't have to be perfectionists, but gifted servers are perfectionists. For other gifts, perfect, per perfectionism could be a sign of abnormal behavior, but for servers, but the server has been created a perfectionist for God's purpose. Someone in the body of Christ needs to exhibit this trait in a positive and balanced way. 18, they view, uh, they view serving to be the, the top priority in life. Service seem to be, or to, uh, or service seem to the server to be the essence of Christianity. I say that again. Service seem to the server to be the essence of Christianity. To him or her, the rest is mere words. Certainly, Jesus' example and teaching on the importance of having a servant's heart reinforces his or her conviction that serving is the greatest activity of all. But servants need to be careful not to insist that others feel the same way. Each gift thinks its type of function is the most important of all. But it's not. We all function together. We went through that when we went through Corinthians, looking at the head, the hands, the eyes, and so forth. Everybody just needs to get in place. The server prefers doing a job to delegating it. Not only do servers prefer to do the job themselves, they also have a sense of guilt when they don't. Mm -hmm. Servers support others who are in leadership. Servers make wonderful secretaries, vice presidents, or committee members. They have incredible loyalty to those who, serve, who they serve under, and it is not unusual for a servant to burn the midnight oil to bring the project to culmination. Servants want to see those they support succeed. Now, right before we go to the problem of the servers, uh, the author has shared what they call the exception to the rule that servants need to know. So this is a good place to point out an important exception to the rule that people will function best in the motivational gifts that God has given them. Here it is. When God calls you to do a job outside the sphere of your motivational gift, he will also give you an anointing that will enable you to do the job. The anointing supersedes the giftedness. Like there are times when you'll find yourself in this place, even if your primary gift is not serving, he's going to anoint you to get the job done. Okay? Okay? We continue to emphasize that this teaching on motivational gifts is not designed to put you in a box, label all I can do, be led by the Holy Spirit in everything, and be open to a special call from God and the subsequent provision at any time in your life. Like, don't be running around talking about, oh, we were teaching this at churches, so I can't do this no more over here. Okay, go back to the manifest manifestation gifts. He uses those who are available. And if you are available, he will anoint you to get that done until someone comes along. Amen. I mean, I told you before, I never intended on having a youth choir for 15 years. I stepped in at the church, took over the youth choir because the pastor kept saying somebody needed to do it. And I was sitting in the audience, and I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm mercy, God, if you keep saying, I'm going to need to get these kids up. So I'm going to need to do a song with these gym. And yeah, I sing, but I didn't want to direct none. And then I became the director and the leader, you know, because I was willing. And God anointed me to bring the choir together, you know, the kids. People wanted to come on the Sundays that the youth was singing. <laughs> now, you know, I obey God. Although, you know, I obey God. <laughs> and that's that. <laughs> so evaluate yourself and look at, have you added up your points yet? Your score low? See there? <laughs> nah, it may not be primary. I don't think it is either. 
So let's look at the problem of the server. All right? The server is critical of others who don't help out with obvious practical needs. Y'all have done that or know somebody? They ain't helping. I came and cleaned up the church. And then nobody else want to help me clean up the church. You know, they could have helped me. But that was your assignment, server. <laughs> or if you helped me, you shouldn't have helped me. Okay. So the example in here is talking about Mary and Martha, Luke 10, 38 through 42. How uh, Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to him teach. While Martha was in the kitchen preparing food to serve their hungry guests. And to Mary, I mean to Martha, Mary's obliviousness to a practical need was incomprehensible. Luke 10 and 40. But Martha, overly occupied and too busy, was distracted with much serving. And she came up to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. To lend a hand and do her part along with me. Golly. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy, I told you all of us got our problem areas. Okay? We can't get high and mighty. To Martha getting that meal ready was the most important thing in the world. Jesus loved the server a gift in her, of course, but also identified the server problem and spoke right back to her concerning her problem, right? So you can go read that on your own time to see what all he said to her. And it looked like poor Martha, but I preached on that uh, Saturday. I mentioned sometimes we can have that Martha spirit where we just get to doing and we don't see Jesus. <laughs> My God, you were missing Jesus. And that's the point. Number two, Servers problem may neglect their own family needs by being too busy helping others. The typical example is that of the server husband who so enjoys helping out the neighbors and others <coughs> that he never has time to fix things around his own house. Then there's the wife who does so much volunteer work that soon the laundry is stacking up and dinners are getting later. Because service can so easily get overextended, they need to be sure of their priorities. Ouch. I'm like, that's both of us have been in the time. Yes, it is. I, I put out about put up about two stacks of clothes today, but I got about five stacks. <laughs> I Although written about a woman, Proverbs 31 and 16, is good advice for all, especially the service, it says she considers a new field before she buys or accepts it, expanding prudently and not courting neglect of her present duties by assuming other duties. All right. Number three, may become pushy or interfering in eagerness to help. Sometimes the server can help where help is not wanted. <laughs> you ain't gotta tell me twice. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna sit down. Number four, finds it hard to accept being served by others. Because service so love to do the serving, they can feel awkward when someone else serves them. But the fact is they need to learn to receive as well as give. Otherwise, they rob others. Get this. Here's the key of the joy of serving. Because there are some people that say, I, I'm just used to it. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. You got to make room for somebody else to have that joy. Because ultimately, joy is a derivative of you being in your place. Enjoying your service at any time, practical, spiritual, no matter what it is, you're, if you're complaining and grumbling, you need to check to see if you're in the right place. 
That means you just drop like a hot potato, perhaps, yeah. depending on what it is. But you need to be praying about where should you be moved to? What should you do for real mm -hmm. that's going to make you happy at doing it? Now, for some folks, don't be getting this twisted. You're talking about I ain't doing nothing because they don't want me to do nothing. You go home. Now, you got a bad spirit. <laughs> you got a real bad spirit because they ain't about they. That's what, that's what we're trying to get everybody to see. It ain't about they. It's about you. You can ask us, what do we want you to do in the church? But you need to be talking to God about what should I do for you? Because, you know, for a long time, you guys, I think I was talking to my son, uh, Danny. We, we had a good chance to have some little talks about at home. But I was talking to him, and I was telling him about things that he had in his heart to do. He's, I mean, about young people and stuff he has. As a son, I need you to tell us, lay it out, let's work it out. Because some people have mixed up that, let me just talk about the church. Some people have it mixed up that the pastor is supposed to bring out everything that happened in this ministry. Mm -hmm. When we don't know everything that's going on with you and God. Mm -hmm. So, and then some people have it mixed up that they see a ministry that's got more than these one, two, three, four, five that's here tonight. And they think that it came like that. But it was, it was because you were birthing things as God gave them to you. And those things were attracted to who they need to be attracted to, and you grew. So if you're not growing, it's not always the pastor's fault. Because sheep beget sheep. You got to know who you are and spit that stuff out so we can support it. And then like I told you, there were times when some people didn't understand when I learned who I was, there were times when I knew it was not the place. The church was not going to be the place. I mean, shoot, I was told by the pastor. Why I say, hey, hey, mm -hmm. you trying to build a church within a church? What you talking about? <laughs> you know? So, because God gave it to me, I worked it in the park. Okay. And it wasn't with the church people. Mm -hmm. Not all So all I'm saying is, you, I don't know how I got there. <laughs> but, don't be just disconnected because you think you're supposed to disconnect. Mm -hmm. Don't have a bad spirit. Here's the last one. It said, a server is easily hurt when unappreciated. Now, I got to read this to you. The need for appreciation is so deeply built into the server that some hurt is almost inevitable, though. Okay? It's really almost because that's who you are. That's who we are. I'm not, that's not my primary. A lot of serving, I learned it. And then I'm on go now. Like, I don't want to be. I'm trying, I was telling Gabe the other day, I said the other story. I like, I'm at the point where now I want to sit. I don't want to do anything but be at home and do church. That's really all I really want to do in my life right now. That's it. That's, that's all. <laughs> Period. Fold some clothes. Fix them, them. I'm the stuff I said I didn't want to do before. <laughs> I used to not even appreciate folk, you know, when they talk about for Christmas gift, get you a mixer. And I didn't give me no mixer. That's my whole family. But now I'm that person. Okay. Give me a mixer. <laughs> you know, my life has changed for me so drastically, you know. Till it, the, the fall brings it out in me, y'all. That's why I was cooking. That's like, well, you cook some chicken salad now? You cook salmon? <laughs> right. <laughs> when our fall is over, it's going to be over. But there, this ain't me But I all the time. But I had to learn. That's what I'm trying to say. I had to learn. I got sister-in-laws that really almost all of Jerome's family or service that I can think of, every last one of them that I have met. Because they walk in the house cleaning, moving. What what do you want? When we get through with dinner, the kitchen is either already clean or that's beeline to the kitchen. Beeline to the dining room. They taking care of stuff. That's not my family as a whole. That's not me. So once I began to learn that the greatest among you are those that serve. And I, I'm saying we can get some of this. Once I began to learn, though, I prayed. 
God, help me pay attention to this area so that I can be a better servant. Okay, period, everywhere. So now I clean up the kitchen. If I'm there, they know I'm going to clean up, I'm going to move stuff, I'm going to help you, I'm trying to help you, that kind of thing. And it's kind of embedded from the Holy Ghost because my heart changed. Okay? This final thing, it says, Gloria wrote to say, listen what the author say. It said, Gloria wrote him and said, I love to be appreciated. I'm highly motivated to do more when people are grateful. But frankly, it really hurts me when I put myself out to help someone and they never even say thanks. That seems to be happening a lot lately. What should I do? Should I just quit helping those people who don't seem to appreciate my efforts? So listen to his response. Dear Gloria, first of all, check your motives. Okay? We still, they're going to go right back to Matthew 23, right? Are you trying to be seen for real? What are your motives for what you do? Since that's who you are, you know, are you doing it for the love of Christ? Right. Or are you doing that for the love of your own glory? Mm -hmm. Pastor said earlier, I think you have to learn to, you know, not do that kind of thing. We all have to learn, I think, a certain amount of humility is learned. Are you helping others just to get their thanks? We know that your gift motivates you to be helpful, but you need to learn how to be helpful without expecting any thanks. We find it's important to look to the Lord for appreciation. He always gives it even when others don't. Let his love and appreciation be enough for you. And then if a person thanks you, too, that's the frosting on the cake. Just keep serving. Amen. Amen. So if they see you, they see you. But if you don't get a cookie, tell God thank you. Amen. Amen. The time that I served, I ain't getting no cookie after this. And I'll tell you, be looked over and looked over and looked over. But get this, I ain't never stopped being blessed. Because that's a part of giving. You see. And every time you give of yourself, God's going to turn around and bless you. 100 fold in return if you do it, we do it just right. You're going to always be blessed. Amen. 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 That's our time right on time, pretty much. Amen. Amen. Any questions or comments, y'all? Amen. Huh? Giving. All right. Amen. 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 For those that are watching, uh, this is good soil. We believe that uh, you'll be blessed by giving. I've been giving for a long time, and I've really been blessed giving to the great I Am Temple, planting the seed, amen, and knowing that God is going to bless it richly because of the word that goes forth richly and because of the heart of the people that are here. So be a blessing on tonight. I'm going to ask you if you can, and you're watching, and you've been watching, uh, plant a $20 seed tonight, amen. You can give by way of Giveify, or you can give uh, by Cash App, T-G-I-A-T-P, or you can uh, mail it, P.O. Box 241, Monticello, Arkansas, 71657. Or you can come on by the sanctuary and drop it off. <laughs> amen? Amen. amen. Y'all know what to do inside. Let us stand, pray. Pastor, do you have anything you want to pray us out or any comments? You good? Yeah. Amen. I hope you guys were blessed tonight. Amen. Let me put your hands together and bless the Lord. Amen. 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 I hope you were blessed tonight by the word of the Lord. And next time we gather, I'll give you some scriptures, but we're going to go to the teacher. That's very interesting. And we're going to talk about the teacher. We're moving right along. And then we get through, we'll be able to see, uh, you'll be able to see just who you are, and hopefully, prayerfully, we can pray over that, and you can function better knowing that you're in the right place. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the opportunity to give. We pray that you would bless us, Father God, and bless those who have given on tonight, Father God. Bless them, oh, Father God, for their obedience and for their faithfulness, Father God. We pray, Father God, that as we study this word, Father God, that it will truly resonate on our hearts when we leave a church, that in practical things, Father God, in practical matters, oh, Father God, we'll be rest assured, Father God, that we're doing your will 
in our life, Father God, according to how you have constructed us, how you have birthed us, and how you have said, Father God, that we are the apple of your eye. And Father God, that no good thing is withheld from us, Father God. We thank you for doing it tonight. And Father God, as we leave this place, oh God, let your presence be with us, oh Father God, until we meet again. In Jesus' name I pray.